hello again. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to cover the animation module. If you've been watching any of the previous tutorials in this series, uh, you'll realize I've been itching for the animation module and I've really like kind of skipped over every other module. You'll probably realize why when as I go through the animation module. So uh, without further ado, let's get on. As you can see, I've bought in some uh, videos, so two of them obviously I've shot myself. The third one I got from a, a site called Detonation Films. Detonation Films are really good because uh, they offer stock footage and some of it is actually free. So I actually just downloaded some free stock footage. And the great thing about them is they've uh, even their free stuff you can use as long as uh, it's being used as part of any creative work. As in, you don't just re-uploading it, but if you're like making yourself explode or whatever, or like if you could take one of the bullet hits for example, and putting it on top of your own footage, that's now creative work, so you can use it however you want. Uh, and so it's really good place to get free stuff. <laughs> that's basically what I'm saying. Do, 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 do. Oh, as you can see, I have a video uploading right now, which is my text and paint modules one. So what I'm kind of going to do is go through the animation module, and we're going to effectively make an animation out of all this. Uh, da, 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 da. So go to animation. Uh, we have the world layer. As I've said in the previous ones, the world layer is basically your scene, your main camera. So I don't touch it. I don't like touching it, to be honest. And I just click on add layer. And that's what I'd recommend to most people. Uh, just leave the world layer as is. Uh, da, da, da. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three layers because I'm going to have three things there. So the bottom layer I'm going to select and let's say put my lightsaber on there. My second layer, I'm going to select and put sky replacement on there. And then the top layer, I'll put the destination films. We're going to go through a load of things with the animation layer because the animation layer is so versatile. Right, so the first and foremost, one of the first modules I covered was the text module, and I was like, it's virtually useless. Why did I say that? Because if you click on add layer in the animation layer, you get and click on th add 3D text then go into the layers tab of that, you can actually change the styles and it, if you look at it, it looks exactly like the anime, the text module as itself, which is why I said in effect the text module itself is a bit redundant because you can do it in the 3D, the, the animation module and the animation module is obviously better because you can layer different clips on top of each other to end up making your final composition. And we'll actually use this so I'll keep that. Right, now looking at your main view, so obviously we've got our modules here. We've got add layer, name, delete, up, down. So we can rename our layers. So the bottom layer is uh, was the lightsaber one. So I click on it, click on name. I can actually now rename that to lightsaber or light. The second layer was, uh, if I rename that, was a uh, sky. Third layer, if I rename that, was explosion. So as you can see, uh, I'll, I'll rename that to text. We can now easily manage. I know which layer is which. If I want to see through a layer, for example, so at the moment, what we can see is a shaka, which is the text on top of the explosion. So if I uncheck this next to this, this eye symbol, now you won't be able to see the shaka layer. If I then uncheck the explosion, now you're seeing the sky layer. If I uncheck the sky, you're seeing lightsaber layer. So as you can see, it's just basically a way of soloing out stuff to make it easy to see. So if you've got your composition ready, but you you just want to tweak something right at the bottom, it's kind of that. Uh, anyone used to After Effects would find it fairly simple and fairly easy to use. It's Or anyone used to GIMP or Photoshop, it's basically the same thing. It's just the same thing can be hap would happen, a little, uh, happen with the ticks. Uh, I'm not sure if that stops also final rendering not entirely 100% sure. I think that might be why there's two different ways of getting rid of them. But as a general rule of thumb, it, when you come to your final render, make sure they're all on because if you've been turning them off, it's not going to render. Right. So if we take the light saber layer, I'm going to solo everything else. This is basically any standard clip that you bring in here that will have scene, layers, controls, media, keyframes. Again, the keyframes I personally find are really hard to use. You can move them around a little bit, but I generally leave them as is and I don't touch them in the keyframe 
craft box to be honest because it's just quite unusable next we have the media layer so as i've alluded into other ones what it's got is it's got zero uh yes 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 we'll carry on with that what it's got under video options it says zero well, that means it starts at frame zero so in frame one out at frame 360 so effectively what it's saying is the lightsaber has got 360 frames in it uh, da, 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 da. so we can actually change that in effect cut it so uh, we have all this going on here as you can see but let's say we were gonna cut it as you can see he's moving well me I'm moving but what it now means is it, when we start at zero it's actually starting at frame 168 rather than frame one but as you can see that means at the end he's frozen because it doesn't last the full length so that's a really quick way and we're actually going to use that a little bit later on to cut out the detonation detonation films footage again there's keying again i'll show you that in the detonation films it'll be easier to see but basically all it does is if you click on key it should in theory get rid of this and allow what's underneath to come through uh, you can get a lot more complicated if you look at my blending modes tutorial it's m explained better in that in terms of getting alphas I have sometimes got them to work but it's a bit hit and miss uh, it's really good to be honest only if you've got a black background which is what we're going to be using with the explosion and which most people to be honest on YouTube are looking for they're looking for ways to make explosions or muzzle flares so it'd be fairly easy to do with that da -da 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 -da. apart from that on here there's not much else really there's this loop function i've never really used it but i suppose you could use it if you've got a short clip that you want to keep running in the background definitely so we've got the controls now the controls are rotation movement scale and transparency so obviously transparency is just how see-through it is rotation so now you can do whatever you want with that as you can see so I'm going to reset that and this is good th these tabs are exactly the same for the sky for the explosion for the shark the text one obviously it's slightly different because it's an in-house effect from Sharker in terms of the text so in the layers tab you'll have slightly different effects there what you'll notice in in the layers tab in light sky and explosion is you have a layer type and the effects which we also briefly mentioned in the effects palette in the effects module which is the CPU effects the mesh effects and the GPU effects and a compositing mode again that doesn't really seem to do much so I would leave that part alone <laughs> so what we're gonna do is I'll just go over it over just show you a quick representation of the some of these effects so we've got this little bit here let's say we want to key this out to get uh, it, uh, what do you call it again? To put in a different sky, we click on the CPU effect, chroma key. So now the chroma key is up. Make sure the chroma key is selected. Click on controls, and you get red, green, blue, red, green, blue, and that by then adjusting these, we can then get rid of all of that. Now an easy way to do that, to be honest, is if you click on desktop, go to Kia, and use the Kia to do this to give you a rough guide so if you click on the dropper now the one thing people do is they come over here and they're like I'm gonna click here for some reason it doesn't actually register that there's a picture here and so if you actually look in the top left hand corner up here it's showing a different picture and the reason is it's taking it from this back picture here and so what we can just click on that as you can see it's got rid of most of it now what we're gonna do is go to Axis 191142142. Basically, these controls here, even though it says re translation rotation, are actually the color values that you would use in your animation module. So 191142142. So two five six two five six two five six. I'm going to go through this very quickly because this is also covered in some of my other tutorials, especially the sky replacement one with motion tracking. But as you can see, we've got rid of the background, so now we can put in whatever we want 
on top. There you go. Pretty simple. Uh, da, 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 da. Then on top of this, so okay, these are a bit jagged edges. So why, why don't we add some blur onto that? Uh, just a slight amount. As you can see, it smooths the edges out, gives us a nice crisp finish. As you can see, I'm I'm adding effect upon effect upon effect. So this is one thing that any person who wants to do special effects needs to realize is that unfortunately there's no one button that does the exact effect you want it to do. Even when you look at tutorials by people like videocopilot.net or other people or people on YouTube were really good using After Effects they still some of the more complicated effects use five or six compositions and each composition has four or five layers everything building upon everything else and that's really how visual effects works one thing will build upon another thing to build upon another thing to eventually make your final output uh, again a good example of that is my uh, my tutorial on sky replacement in which I do use this actual video and we get rid of this sky, we track it, and then we do some color correction on it. So I hope you can see basically what we're doing is we're just going through and adding the effects. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll delete these now. So I'll leave you to look at these effects, figure them out for yourself. Uh, the GPU effects, I have a feeling that if you've got a really good graphics card, these might work. I'm not sure. I'm actually using a laptop that's over four years old now. The only other thing I have is I've got a PC which is actually six years old, so on either of them it doesn't work. But I have maybe if you've got a really good graphics card in your computer or your laptop, it might work. I'm not sure, but as I said in a couple of my previous module tutorials, these don't work for me at all. Off if they don't work, either they won't work and it will just be a blank screen. Uh, let's take distortion for example, like that, or they will work, but as in they'll just cause the shocker to crash. And it's happened here. <laughs> do, 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 do. So I have to open the chakra up again. <laughs> Perfect example of why you shouldn't be doing that. Right, now I've got to bring everything back in here. So, uh... Right. I'm going to name that light. Right, on the left hand side you'll also notice of underneath the name there's delete, which obviously means if you want to delete a layer. The only layer you can't delete is the world layer, but every other layer you can. Uh, there's also order of appearance, so if you actually want to change the order of appearance, so you want actually the sky to be on top of the explosion, then you click on sky, click up, and it'll bring it up. Uh, this really comes in handy when you're doing stuff like chroma keying because whatever's on top come out in front Then you'll have whatever's behind and then you'll have whatever's behind that So uh, da, 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 down. That's how we'll do it uh, Then obviously down is exactly the same just click on down and it brings the order down So I hope you can see where it's going. Uh, I'll go over these layer types now Basically you have a layer which is basically a flat image then what you could actually do is a do, 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 do. let's take this lightsaber raw sky replacement and the detonation films. I'm going to get rid of these and let's say I wanted to make a ball out of this for whatever reason. If I click on sphere, it actually makes it into a sphere. So then I'll click on controls and start doing some rotation. As you can see, effectively we've made a sphere. For some reason, it doesn't give me. A full sphere. <laughs> I honestly don't know why, but yeah, it it's a sphere nonetheless, I suppose. Um, I think that's to do with the size of the image and the resolution, because I have made a full sphere before, so it's all to do with size of image and resolution. But you can come in and you can do anything. So you can make a cube. Uh, you can make a cylinder, and then you can click on mesh. Here. So if you click on mesh. It just looks standard. It, does, it doesn't look like anything's changed. Or has it? If I uh, bring it here like that. What I'm going to do is go back into layers. And now I'm going to add a mesh effect. So the mesh effect, what it actually does is it physically deforms the layer. So uh, if we take a ripple, as you can see now, an actual ripple has informed, has been created. Effectively, it's created a 3D plane and stuck our 
video on it as a texture and then deform the 3D plane. I hope people can actually see the use of this. Um, there is a very popular movie by the name of Matrix in which a gentleman by the name of Neo decides to jump in the air and fly and he uses this effect where he, when he bends down the, you see the ground visibly deforming so what you could actually do is if you really wanted to is you could cut out your person cut out your ground and then have your ground have this ref this ripple effect happening on it so it looked just like it happens in the movie where you have this ripple moving away from this person about to jump up so he's effectively I don't know changing code in the matrix or whatever he's doing and uh, obviously there's loads of different effects and they again they can all be piled upon each other and you can mix effects so you don't just need mesh effects you can add a mesh effect on top of a, a CPU effect and they'll all work hand in hand again with effects you can move them up or down to change the order of appearance Again, I shall leave you just to have a play around with them. The best thing about effects is you just have a play around and see what works for you what and how it works. Uh, as I've alluded into one of my other modules, uh, the animation of the, in this module is pretty much exactly the same. So what you do is if, let's say, what we'll, actually what we'll do is we'll create a small thing now. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this up. Minus, let's say 50. Why scale it to minus 50? Uh, you can actually move it around in the actual thing by just dragging it and clicking. Really easy, pretty simple to do. Now, with the sky, I'm going to do exactly the same. So, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, a quick way of adding in a specific value if you want to add it in is hover over the numerical value, right click on it, and this calculator comes up. There is, however, a downside. Because I want to put scale down, I have to do minus 50. Now, it doesn't recognize minus 50 if I type in minus 50. So you have to do 0 minus 50 equals. And accept. And the same here. As you can see, it's done that. And if I just place it here. I could have obviously used these to place it, but I just found it easy to do it like that. So now we've got the two vi videos playing there. Ooh, just like 24. Dun, dun, dun. But yeah. And so what we'll do is uh, what we'll, we'll add our layer of 3D text. And we I'm going to make an outline type of thing. We'll make it Comic Sans. We'll give it a nice red color. And uh, we will move it to the middle, move it down a little bit, and then just like in the uh, other module tutorial, we're going to move it out, press keyframe, and as we get to the end here, we'll move it back in, we'll press keyframe. So as you can see, we now have our animation coming in and out. So even though it's called animation module, I don't want people to be put off by thinking, oh, I can only do animations in it. I want to do special effects. This is effectively where you're going to be doing all your special effects. It's just laying them on. I don't know why they've called it animation module. They should have called it the special effects module or the, do everything it can you can with Sharker module. Um, so once we've done that, I'm going to uncheck this explosion. Now, what we're going to do is inside of the animation module, we're going to do a bit of rough editing. So I want to find, I've got a bunch of explosions here. So that's the explosion I want. That's the explosion I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to this front. Okay. So that is frame eight. So if you remember right at the start, make sure explosions clicked in, go to media. That's frame eight. I want, so I'm going to go to, I want it to come in at frame eight. And then as it goes through, it goes out on frame. If it's, if you're looking at 25 frames per second, or if you take 30 frames, blah, 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 
What frame is that? Sorry, I'm being stupid here. Gotta use my calculator. So if you take 25 frames per second plus 14 frames, it's 39 frames. So if it's frame 39, I'll just type it in. Oh no. So it must be the 30 frames per second thing. There we go. So now I've just cut it down to that little bit. So as you can remember from before, but I don't want it to appear then. I don't want it to appear then at all. So I'm going to uncheck that, check everything else off. And what I want it to do is I want it to appear when this hits there. So an easy way of switching between keyframes. So there's two keyframes on this layer. The first keyframe, if we go to where the keyframe uh, buttons are, so the plus button adds a keyframe, the minus button deletes a keyframe. This button goes to the previous keyframe, which was at the start. This brush button goes to the next keyframe along in the timeline. So if you have like 10 keyframes, it will just cycle through each keyframe. So this is the keyframe where this stops. What I want it to do is become visible at this point. And this is actually at exactly eight seconds. So I know I did eight, 25 first. So if we do eight times by 30, because our thing is playing at 30 frames per second, we look at frame 240. So what I need to do is go back to my explode. And if you remember rightly, I said, if we click this, it will start it a bit later on. So I want it, let's say to start at frame 220. And now if I click start, and I'll probably got it completely off. Oh no. So I want it to happen a little bit earlier. So as you can see, you're thinking, oh, wait, what? That don't look good. Well, wait for it. Earlier on, I said something about the keying. What? Uh, the easiest way to do it with this is because it's a completely black background, if we click on key, it'll let whatever's behind show through really nice and easily. So we could effectively, now you can imagine this is a an advert. It's showing their product, so this is the products we sell, and we're using Jashaka to sell them. And then you have a massive explosion to like hit home your point. But as you can see, very simply, very quickly, we can, by using layers and using the different blending modes, we can build up a really okay-ish looking, and if you put more time into it, a really decent uh, composition using the animation module. And for anyone looking to do special effects, this is the module I would recommend. Uh, you have to obviously realize it's not After Effects. You're not paid a thousand pounds for it, or well, just over a thousand pounds for it. So because of, and you've got it for free. So because of that, it might take you, you might have to do some roundabout ways of doing certain things, but that's what you get when you don't pay any money. Uh, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you've had any questions, let me know, um, and I shall endeavor to do what I can to help you out. Thank you. Bye.